welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new episode of Six Punk Chat. Um, I remember, uh, you know, what is the format of this uh, uh, video blog is pure punk nature. So we want to promote individual freedom and anti-establishment view in customer experience world. The format is uh, extremely easy, one to one. It means one guest, two questions for one challenging customer management topic. Our guest today is Marco Jovic. Uh, welcome, Marco. Marco right, is, uh, yeah, no, don't worry. You can, <laughs> I will leave you uh, a lot of uh, time to talk. But, speak, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, Marco is a senior customer experience manager at A1, Austria Telecom Group. He's managing a customer experience program among seven different countries covering 25 million customers, a lot. <laughs> Today, I want to take advantage of Marco's expertise managing uh, such multi-countries program. But first of all, Marco, tell us a little bit about you and uh, how you became passionate about customer experience. Thanks, Federico. Well, first of all, um, thank you for having me on this uh, punk chat, as you call it. I think it's a really, really cool initiative and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, regarding uh, your question, well, as you announced me, um, my name is Marko Jovic. I'm a senior customer experience manager in A1 Telecom Austria Group, uh, basically. Uh, I'm responsible for group customer experience programs, so seven markets, seven different markets, seven countries in the in the program. Um, we try to cover as uh, much topics as 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 we can, but our current focus, as you probably know, in the last couple of years, has been um, taking the voice of the customer program within within the CX program to to the next uh, to the next level. Um, regarding your question, how did I become a CX enthusiast, as I like to call myself? <laughs> well, it's it's an interesting, it's it's an interesting path and interesting development path uh, I had. Um, my first role within A1 Telecom Austria Group uh, was uh, in a local uh, market in in Serbia, and I started as a sales advisor, uh, working on the touch point, uh, working in our uh, let's say how do we call it, flagship point of sales in, in Belgrade, uh, Serbia. And there, for the first time work, working directly with the customers, I, I had, uh, let's say, the, the, the privilege and opportunity to look in firsthand the extraordinary impact that customer experience can have on, 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 on the customers themselves and on the company. And uh, it can be a, a very positive in, impact, but it can also be a very negative impact. And back then, when I first started to, to do this job, I, I constantly thought to myself, um, how many uh, things are we going, doing good and great? How many things are we doing bad? And how many things could we improve? And why is no one addressing these things? Or why is nothing uh, moving? Uh, moving? And um, interestingly enough, I, I've always been a big enthusiast of, of marketing, of, of brand topics, and I see customer experience as an as a incredibly important um, topic for the overall brand perception, brand, uh, brand parameters. And oddly enough, a couple of years later, I think three years later, a um, uh, first customer experience program was formed in, in Belgrade, Serbia, and um, in VIP Mobile. And, um, um, I had the opportunity to to apply for the position and, and really uh, you know move away from the touch points a bit more to the strategic role, and basically a uh, whole world opened up uh, from them in the in the span of just uh, I think so from 2015 in just five years, from uh, let's say a, a sales advisor to junior customer experience expert to customer experience team leader in in Bit Mobile Serbia and now to the group responsible uh, manager I seen a lot and I did a lot. So yeah, that's, that's a short background. So, so basically VIP was one of the operate one of the operations yeah, that still was is, acquired yeah. by uh, by uh, Austria Telecom Group. Yeah so it just was for a, the people that please of course of course VIP mobile is a part of Telecom Austria group and it's 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 a greenfield investment. This means it's been built up from from the ground. So it wasn't you know ah, a, okay. a, acquired so it's basically a, a build build telecom provider from the ground up from Okay, okay. So we can say that Serbia is not just uh, producing good uh, football players and uh, basketball players and uh, exactly. water ball <laughs> players, but tennis also players. <laughs> tennis player, correct? <laughs> so, but also good uh, customer experience manager <laughs> player. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. Um, 
concerning if we, if we talk about your programs, because uh, I mean, it's, it's quite, uh, let's say, big uh, and uh, heterogeneous because you have uh, seven countries, seven totally different languages, uh, as of course, seven cultures. How difficult is to manage a pan-European six program uh, uh, of that size, basically? Well, I, I wouldn't call it difficult. I, I would call it so sometimes challenging, quite challenging, but on the other hand, also extremely exciting and extremely rewarding. Um, you know, having the opportunity to work and interact with people of, of such different cultures is, is an extraordinary experience, I have to say, which I enjoy. And I always try to look at it from that perspective. You know, it's, it's not difficult, it can be challenging because um, as you mentioned, the, the differences in, in culture, what I, what I learned so far, the differences in culture that we have in our, within our footprint um, can be quite big. And, uh, you know, trying always to uh, maintain this balance be between, you know, uh, expectations and, and, and uh, deliverables and, and uh, uh, trying to produce the best possible value is, uh, is a, um, quite a bit, big task. And uh, this is why uh, I also think it's extremely rewarding. Whatever you do in, in such an environment, it can be a small activity, it can be a big activity. I consider it always to be a huge success uh, because we always have, you know, sev seven different desires and seven different maturity levels uh, in, in the end uh, in our footprint regarding customer experience and trying to find always the, the, the best uh, fit for, for uh, each and every OPCO is, uh, is really as you can imagine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, the, the point is also you are in between because on, on one side you have the, let's say the corporate group. So you have to report probably your figures, uh, your KPIs to the groups. And then on, on, the, on, on the other side, you have uh, basically seven different realities. You said seven di different maturity levels. Um, how difficult was, for instance, to agree um, on, uh, you know, what kind of KPIs you have to measure um, in order uh, then to be, you know, consistent in the way that the KPIs are measured exactly the same in all uh, in all countries, and then reported uh, in a proper way, you know, comparing Apple with Apple uh, to the to the corporate. Uh, uh, what is uh, sorry uh, if I insist on this point, but what how difficult was, and if you can give us some uh, basically uh, best practice or suggestions uh, how to manage the, this this important part in a in a pan European project. Well, it, it has been let's say a a, a, a bit difficult, but um, uh, to be honest. All, let's say all, all the alignment on, on the points you just uh, mentioned, uh, I, I have to say, um, we always uh, approach them from a team perspective, if you understand what I mean. So there were no top-down decisions from the group on, on the opcos, but it was, you know, all of us together sitting down, discussing the KPIs, discussing the, the best approaches. On some approaches we agree, on some others we, we don't agree. But on the main, uh, let's say that the, the main pillars, the main KPIs, uh, we found uh, we found a way to to agree and uh, to to report at the end. Um, uh, I have to say this is always an ongoing topic because uh, the the company is constantly growing, changing. Uh, this means new touch points are arising, new touch points are emerging. This also, as a consequence, has um, monitoring of the new touch points, and then it's let's say it's. Uh, uh, it, it's it's a constant topic um, uh, to you know find a way um, uh, to 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 balance the, the the reporting and everything that that we do because for some uh, to be honest for some topics and, and for some um, touch points and KPIs it really doesn't make sense to look at it on a harmonized way because every local market is uh, specific to its own on the big touch points on, on really big touch points the, the important touch points uh, I mean the important from customers perspective. Um, we, we, we do have a harmonized approach. So for instance, point of sales, customer service uh, online, you know, but uh, for a smaller metadata data touch points, we don't want to harmonize everything, especially for new touch points. We want to give um, to the opcos the, the opportunity and individuality to 
um, uh, really set things up in a um, in a way they consider it to to be the best. We try to enable them in this, support them, give them advice, for instance, and also with this approach for these new topics, we look at different approaches across the footprint, and okay. we, we see you know what is the best approach here, and this yeah. is why it's good sometimes to have diversity as well, because when you look at it from different perspectives, you then see. Uh, okay, really, the, I mean, in X epsilon country, they, they did a really phenomenal job. Let's maybe try to harmonize it with all the countries. So this is the approach we, we try to take. Uh, so far. Yeah, a little bit, uh, you know, the, the Swiss approach in politics. So, you know, uh, try, yeah. to find, try, try to find an agreement. Uh, it's always uh, a balance. It's yeah, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's always a, a And, uh, yeah, and, and, and uh, I mean, I, 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 think, I think it works. Um, Last questions, because I don't want, of course, <laughs> to take you here for a lot of time, but we have this chance to talk to you. And I think um, it, 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 it's, it's a really, you know, nice, uh, nice topic and, and important topic. Uh, mm -hmm. when, when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, improvements and best practice, how important is this, uh, you know, forum? So um, are you able, for instance, to test something in a specific country to see that it works and then to convince because at, at that point you have to convince the others to follow or uh, it works in a different way it works in exactly the way you just said so okay. basically you know for for the for the big program setup uh, yeah we you know as you as you know for sure we we did migrate big things we we aligned on the big things but now the new things that are, that are coming, you know, the new trends in, in the customer experience, in voice of the customer, we do try to take an experimental approach uh, to pilot it with uh, with uh, with one market to see how it works, to 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 then try to onboard the, the other markets, and not, not just for voice of the customer, for for other uh, customer ex, uh, customer experience topics as well, um, because we do try to take a, a, always an approach. We don't want to do things top down, but we really want to find the, the best possible approach or common ground together with the local markets and, and, and implement it maybe even not in the same way in every market if it doesn't make sense but but really to um, you know share the experiences between us and, and, and uh, share the success stories this is this is one of the most important things in our program thanks thanks a lot marco uh, thanks a lot to participate in the, in this video blog maybe one last thing to mention federico uh, yeah. uh, regarding managing the different cultures I, I think it's maybe relevant for your organization as well the the one thing i learned in in, in this uh, almost uh, year and a half period on on this position um is there is no right or wrong there is no i am right you are wrong there is only uh, different approaches. So, for instance, I see different from, point of views. You exactly, <laughs> I see it from one perspective. Someone else sees it from from a different perspective. And in a multicultural environment, this is even more more important and and, and is even more emphasized. So, um, you know, initially when I started, I was oh, they are wrong, I'm right, and vice versa. <laughs> but now it's really just uh, a big big takeaway. Is, it's only different. We only see things differently. <laughs> yeah. this, is then, a, this is a fantastic suggestion that should yeah. not uh, work just or use in, in customer experience management, but uh, exactly. everywhere yeah. uh, in our life. Uh, yeah. Again, thank Thanks, Mark, to participate and to attend this, uh, um, you know, video uh, podcast. Uh, we had the, the really the, the chance to have Marco Jovic from uh, uh, Austria Telecom Group managing, uh, you know, a big project, seven different countries, 25 million customers. Thanks again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for the next episode of the GX uh, Punk Chat. And uh, thanks, see everyone. you, see you soon. And thanks a lot, uh, thanks a lot, Marco, for attending uh, for attending our video blog. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.